Yo, what's good, everybody? It's Mr. Alvin Pie 313. Just want to do a quick review of the Lions game tomorrow. I guess the Washington Redskins, Wolverines game against the uh, Illinois Fighting, fighting Illini, whoever you say the motherfucker's name. Um, the Redwoods game, which is pretty good. They played the Nashville Predators tonight at home with a 5 3 victory. Uh, it's a third straight. Yes, I think the third straight win. Uh, which is uh, really good because considering how they started the season off 0-2, a little shaky, but um, I noticed they got a lot of athleticism, speed, and youth. And I thought that was kind of holding the Red Wings back from really contending. They were just kind of holding on to the past and holding on to old injury-prone players. is way past their prime, but um, they got a lot younger. They got a lot faster. If they just get better 5-on-5 hockey, um, They'd be really dangerous this year. They're really good on power plays, and it's good to capitalize on your power play goals. But um, once you show up your 5-on-5 five five hockey and your defense, and the goaltending has been absolutely phenomenal. Jimmy Howard, especially against the New York Rangers, on the road in Madison Square Garden, somewhere the Railways have not won in seven years. You know, to finally break that curse and get a win, a huge win in Madison Square Garden against the New York Rangers. But that was big, and Jimmy Howard was absolutely phenomenal in that game. So hopefully they keep that up and not make a deep playoff run this year. Um, Michigan is coming off a bye, and I know that you know you playing teams like Illinois, a team like Illinois coming to the big house. It's really easy to look past a team like that. I totally get that, but I don't think that's going to be the case with the Wolverines. They may come out a little rusty being off for, for the last two weeks, but I think at some point, real early in the game, they'll put their foot on the gas, take care of business, and look forward to that Michigan State game on the 29th. Huge. I cannot wait for that game. Probably one of the, the biggest games of the year, besides the um, Ohio State game, obviously, you know, which is the biggest game of the year. So, even though Michigan State is not having – Clearly, they have absolutely nothing to play for. They've had a horrendous season. I've never seen Michigan State this bad, at least in my recent memory. But um, but with that being the case, I don't expect them just to lay down for Michigan because they basically have nothing to play for. So, you know, why not try to go out spoiling Michigan's perfect season before they get to Ohio State? So, it's going to be a very good game. So, I don't think Michigan Michigan is gonna look past the I mean the Spartans in any shape or form. They're gonna come back for redemption and get revenge from that fluke win last year in Ann Arbor. You know, before that fumble punt. I'm still sick about that. So I'm I just can't wait for us to go in there and try to get that redemption in East Lansing. And I wouldn't even mind if they ran up the score. Fuck it, why not? You did it against the Rutgers, you know. You know, but anyway, um, the Lions, um, hopefully the offense come out rolling. Davis got to step up, man. It's, it's as simple as that. I mean, our record should be a lot better than what it is. Honestly, the record should be, we should be perfect. We should be undefeated. Honestly, it's just the defense has been absolutely below average. And that's just being nice. They have to step it up. They got to do a better job at uh, covering tight ends. They got to do a better job of covering um, the pass um, because we're making mediocre quarterbacks look like 10 year Pro Bowl vets, and that's bad. You know, you, you definitely got to step it up. And I think if somehow, some way, they kind of show up the defense, the Lions would be in pretty good shape. Office has done pretty good so far, and Stafford is having a hell of a season. And hopefully that continues. So I'll be looking forward to that. And again, it's the Redskins who have playmakers. So, you know, it's very hard to win in the NFL, period. I don't give a fuck if you're at home or if you're on the road. You just, it's not easy to get get in the win game. So when you come on half ass, no defense, half ass, no offense, it's really easy to lose. So if you win, you got to earn it. And the Lions got to come with it. I don't fucking lie. There's no excuses. And I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to see how they come out. Um, I'm super excited about the upcoming Pistons season. Um, I 
guess with the new TV deal, you know, teams around the league got a lot more cap space to spend. And with that being the case, I mean, you pretty much go out and just shop, shop till you drop. And I've seen a lot of teams make terrible contract moves. I mean, I've seen awful contracts being given out to injury-prone fucking bombs. You know, like, seriously. But that's one thing I like that Stan Van Gundy did not do. He did not go out and get somebody who just who just had a big name and he gave him some ridiculous-ass contract, some injury-prone-ass player way past his prime or some mediocre player from some other team. Stan Van Gundy went out and he made moves that fit his system. He got players that fit his system. You don't have to overpay for superstars to win the league. It was like when the Pistons won back in 2004. They didn't, out and go out, they didn't go out and get a bunch of superstars. You get what works. You get what fits. And you just go from there. And I love that approach that Stan Van Gundy has taken. You know. And I definitely think that the Pistons are going to get the KCP. Contavious Carwell Pope uh, deal done. I think he's very deserving of a long-term contract. A big contract at that. If Mike Conley had the biggest contract in the fucking NBA history, I don't want to hear shit about KCP getting a twenty million dollar deal. Seriously, Mike Conley, I used to, Mike Conley, the big thing about that, he's a good player. Don't get me wrong, but he is not worth what a hundred fifty three million. No player in the NBA history has signed a contract that big. He is making more than LeBron James. We talk about a man who's never been on the All Star team. He's never been on the ballot, and he's the highest played player in NBA history. That makes no sense to me. So when KCP get that fat ass deal from the Pistons, I don't want to hear shit. Seriously, I mean that's just my opinion. I just think KCP is a lot more valuable to his team than Mike Conley is. You know, and this is coming off an injury uh, injury prone season, so I just don't understand that. But. I guess teams got money to blow like that. Anyway, I digress. Um, I'm going to pull up my boys, Lord Rings, tomorrow. Got to get back, get the season rolling again, and finish what they started. Uh, obviously, I'm pulling up for the Lions. Um, and before I get out of here, just want to acknowledge I've got some very shocking news today about um, Drew Sharp, a Detroit Free Press columnist. I wasn't a fan of his work because I thought he was always brutal on our teams for whatever reason. He always shot on the Pistons. He really shot on the Lions. You know, don't even get me started how you shot, you know, but with that aside, you know, he, he spoke his mind. He kept it real and he wasn't biased. You know, he, he came hard with his criticism. He didn't really care what nobody else thought. I mean, he stuck to his guns. So even though I wasn't necessarily a fan of his work due to his criticism of Detroit teams, um, it's still very sad to hear of his passing. Man, my my heart and my condolences goes out to his family. You know that was big. That was that was shock. I had that hit me hard today. You know, I, I was not expecting to hear that. I was kind of scrolling through my phone. And I found out about it. Um, and for those of you who are not familiar with uh. Drew Sharp, he was Detroit Free Press columnist since 1983, so he's been around for a long time. And despite all his criticism and his critiques of the Lions and the Pistons, you know, every Detroit sports team uh, reached out to him, reached out to his family, and you know, sent their best, sent their condolences. And it's really classy, especially for the Lions. You know, it doesn't matter what he thought of the teams or the moves he disagreed with. I thought it was very classy and all our Detroit sports teams would reach out and, and send a condolences to his family, you know, on Twitter. You know, it, it's just very, very sad to hear that, man. But, you know, rest in peace, big dog, you know. He was hard on our teams, man, but you told her how it was, man. I respect that. So, you know, it's going to be kind of weird knowing that you're not at the free press anymore. Anyway, you know, I think your legacy will live on, you know, it's, and being a U of M grad as well. So, uh, this is very tragic, you know. This has been a crazy year of this un unfortunate passings and 
totally caught you off guard. Now, I even go back to John Saunders a few months ago. That really caught me off guard. That was my favorite ESPN analyst. Now, he really was. And to hear about that, that kind of hit me like a ton of bricks. So, it's been a real tragic year, man. Not just in sports, but in entertainment as well with the passing of Prince. And this has been a crazy year. You know, I just really have. But anyway, I'm going to get on out of here. Um... Hopefully Lions and the Wolverines give me a really good weekend this year. I'm pretty sure the Wolverines will, but the Lions, I really hope y'all come through you know, and get that W, man. It'd be huge because we we still in that race, man. We, we just got to get that win going, get, get a good little streak going, and be consistent with defense and shit, man. I believe in y'all. So anyway, uh, after that game, win, lose, or draw, I'm going to get my review of both games, uh, Lions and Wolverines. And before I get out of here, I want to give a big shout out to the Everybody versus Detroit crew. All my dogs, um, I got um, East Warren LB, 313 Hitman, Man Beast Boy, shout out, um, Dante Chase, Everything King. And if I miss anybody, you know, it's not intentional. I just can't really think of everybody's name off top. But y'all know who y'all are. I got love for all y'all. And um, anybody go to those, those guys' pages, subscribe to their channels like all the videos and show your support man because i definitely do it every time so anyway i'm gonna get on out of here let me give me some rest and i'll see y'all later